Intermediate Algebra Section 7.4, Dividing Radical Expressions. Just as the square of a product can be expressed as the product of two roots, the root of a quotient can be expressed as the quotient of two roots. In other words, when we have the nth root of this quotient, we can separate it into the nth root of A over the nth root of B. If we're given this, sometimes it's to our advantage to write it in this form as well. So in this first problem that we're going to take a look at, we have the square root of the quantity 25, 6. Well, 25 and 36 do not have anything common so we will separate it using the quotient rule for radicals and take the square root of 25 over the square root of 36. 25 is a perfect square of 5, so the square root of 25 is 5. Likewise, 36 is a perfect square since 6 squared is 36, leaving us with a final answer of 36. When we're doing division of radicals, we always should simplify our answer as much as possible. In this next example, prior to separating it, 12 and 49 have nothing in common. However, x to the fifth over x to the first common bases, we can subtract our exponents. So we actually have the square root of 12 over x to the fourth over 49. We've simplified as far as we can as far as reducing the fraction. Now we'll separate it into the square root of the numerator, 12x to the fourth, over the square root of the denominator. Square root of 12 is not a perfect square. However, 12 can be broken down into a 4 times 3, and we'll leave our x to the fourth as is. 49 is a perfect square, so we don't have to do anything with that. Simplifying now, the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 3 we can't do anything with, but an index of 2, if we do our mental simplification here, x to the fourth power divided by 2 leaves us with an x to the second power, a little messy there, over the square root of 49, which is 7. So our final answer is 2x to the second, leaving that 3 to the first power underneath the radical and a denominator of 7 for our final answer. In the next problem, there is nothing common in the numerator and the denominator, so we'll separate the quotient of in this radical by taking the square root of the numerator and while we're at it 175 if you think about this in terms of money there's how many quarters are in a dollar 75 to help us break that down and the reason I'm choosing quarters is 25 is a perfect square 25 times 7 is 175 and we still have the x squared over the square root of y squared. By breaking 175 down into these two factors, we're now ready to simplify. The square root of a product is the square root, the product of the radicals, or in this case the square roots, and square root of 25 is 5. Square root of x squared is an x, and we have 7 to the first power, so we'll leave that underneath the radical. In the denominator, square root of y squared is y, and we've simplified our answer here. In the next example, we have a cube root. Again, if you can simplify ahead of time before you break it into a quotient of the radicals, that's probably going to make life easier. So we're after the cube root of 9 over 72. We have a common value of 9, which is going to leave in 8 in the denominator if we reduce that. We have common bases of x's. 
in a quotient situation, so we'll subtract exponential powers, leaving an x to the 4 minus 1 or third power in the numerator, and a y to the sixth power is unchanged. Now, separating these, and you may be able to determine what the answer is right now, but just to illustrate what's going on, where I'm going to take the cube root of the numerator, which is x to the third power and y to the sixth power, and in the denominator we have a cube root of 8. If we take our exponential powers and divide them by the index, which is the equivalent of converting these to the rational exponents that they are, this would be 3x to the 3 over 3 or first power, y to the 6th over 3 or 6 divided by 3 would be y to the second power, and 8 is a perfect cube since 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, the cube root of 8 is 2. So we have our final answer of xy to the second power over 2. In the next one, we have our quotient rule where they're separated. 30 isn't a perfect square, it's 5 times 6, nothing common there, but the fact that it's 5 times 6 tells us that if we combined it going the other direction on our quotient rule, back under, under one radical, we can simplify this. 30 divided by 5 reduces to the square root of, since 5 divided by 5 is 1, 30 divided by 5 is 6, the square root of 6. 6 being a composite number, but only having the factors of 2 times 3 prime factorization is as simplified as we can get since 2 is to the first and 3 is to the first. In the next one, similar to the last one, in this case we could do a little simplifying, but before we do that, since there's common factors in the numerator and the denominator, go the other direction in the quotient rule for radicals by combining these underneath one radical and simplifying from there gives us the following expression. 54 divided by 2 is going to give us a 27 in the numerator since 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 2 goes into 54 as I said 27 times. We have common bases x to the third over x to the first. Subtract the powers leaves us with an x to the second and common bases with the y's in a quotient. We'll subtract the exponents 4 minus 2 leaves a 2. So we actually by using the quotient rule for radicals, eliminated our rational expression or the quotient and we're now ready to simplify. 27 isn't a perfect square, but 27 is 9 times 3 and 9 is a perfect square since 3 times 3 is 9. So the square root of 9 would be a 3 with a 3 remaining underneath the radical. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of y squared is y. And we had that remaining 3. The square root of 9 came out as a 3 and left the 3 to the first power. So we've simplified our answer for this problem. Let's look at just a couple more here. Same thing in this problem. We have them separated, but it looks like perhaps there's common terms here. So let's put this quotient of radicals as a quotient under one radical. So we have 162 x to the fourth y to the second over 16x y. Now, what's common? At least these values are even. And just to start simplifying that, I'm going to divide or write it as a factor pair of 2 times 81 in the numerator. I'll leave the x to the fourth and the y to the second temporarily. And same thing again, 16 I see as a 2 times 8 x and y. By breaking it down 
and not spending a lot of time looking for common factors. If you notice, because they were even, I broke it down as a factor of two and the other composite number that result or with an equivalent expression, the two over two cancel out. And if you look at 81, it's not a perfect cube, but it does contain four threes. So there is a cube in here. Eight is a perfect cube. Common bases will be able to simplify on our variables. So taking this to the next step then, 81 is three times 27, 27 being a perfect cube. Common bases, x to the fourth over x to the first, four minus one leaves an x to the third. Common bases with the y's, in a quotient setting, we subtract our exponents, two minus one leaves y to the first power. Over, we already canceled out, two over two is one, we have an eight in the denominator. Now we can separate these into taking the cube root of the numerator, can take the cube root of three, but the cube root of 27 would bring a three out of from underneath the radical. Cube root of x to the third, three divided by three, or if you think of this as x to the third power raised to the one third power is gonna leave us with an x. There's only one y here, so that will remain underneath the radical as well. So we have our three to the first power and our y to the first power. And the cube root of eight is two. In this last problem, we can't use the quotient rule to simplify this, even though it is a division of radicals. And the reason being is they don't have the same index. So our only alternative is to write these as the common base to an equivalent rational exponent and see what we can do. Y, the square root of y is y to the 1 half. The cube root of y is y to the 1 third power. We now have common bases in a quotient, which says we can subtract our exponential powers. And to subtract fractions, we need a common denominator, which would be 6. I multiply top and bottom by 3 in the first fraction. That'll give us y to the 3 6 multiply top and bottom by 2 in the second fraction, leaves us with 2, 6. 3, 6 minus 2, 6 leaves us with y to the 1, 6. And now back into radical form, this is equivalent to index of 6, the denominator of our exponent of the radicand y, the sixth root of y.